everyone, this is GT Time. I am Kyle Bossman, your moderator, and joining us as always is our uniquely talented, knowledgeable panel, including Brandon Jones. Hello. Daniel Bloodworth. Hello. And Elise Williams. Hey. <laughs> uh, Elise, you are sitting in our guest seat this week. Thanks for having me. Uh, what is the blue thing? Let's just get this out of the way. What do you uh, have wrapped I was just your at the doctor, so I had blood taken. How much? Um, undisclosed amount. Is it? Is I it, look away. Uh, is it, it the happens. level where like you need cookies? Like, is it at that point where they're like you no, should eat cookies? No, that's any time for me. Yeah. Just, you just have a bed ready. It's a I'm smart not gonna man. Make it. Yeah. <laughs> just have a bed and cookies have a ready bed when ready. you see Bloodworth. <laughs> if you get a paper cut, it's he's done for the day. <laughs> yeah. No, not bad. Uh, Blood, what is your shirt? My shirt. This is probably one of the most obnoxious shirts I've ever worn, mm -hmm. but I had to do it to. Oh, it is. I had to do it because <laughs> you were freaking late on your scripts. And I'm like, I'm up at like some 11 o'clock midnight last night going through your stuff. And I pulled this shirt out of the bag. I'm like, this is really obnoxious. You're I'm right. wearing this on GT time. So, Blood, I hate this shirt. And I'll, <laughs> I'll describe it to anyone who's just listening. Uh, it has a Witcher 3 enemy. And in big, bold words, I got my hands on the Witcher 3. Wild hunt. So, you can find out more about that on Monday. It's like one of those like I survived Jurassic Park the ride shirts. <laughs> Have you noticed this is a trend no. in like game publisher t-shirts and developer t-shirts where it's like it's not just the logo for the game, it's that you had an experience like the PlayStation experience it was I was at the PlayStation experience cuz I tried to give pride. What's yeah, wrong with that? I tried to give you that t-shirt but you weren't at the PlayStation experience. Wouldn't have it. And you wouldn't have it. This in particular to me says you should be jealous of me. Of course. As does any piece of clothing you could wear in any MMO, you know? If you like rank up and get your cool armor, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily, no, but it, like... Oh. You shouldn't be proud of Blood. Blood got his hands on The Witcher 3. Because Blood made that happen for himself. <laughs> like he's going that to the bank Blood's in goal this in shirt. Life was to get access to Witcher 3. He did it, he was there. He wore that shirt. Granted, he himself said it was a stupid shirt. It's probably the last time no, we'll see fair. him in it ever. It's fair. I annoyed him. I'm not saying it's not a stupid shirt. It's a I'm stupid amused, shirt. I'm amused at how upset it makes you. I, I hate that. I hate that they would produce that shirt. I hate that there would be anyone who wears it unironically. Right. There are people who went to that event who are wearing that shirt today, proud to wear that shirt. I think most of them are probably just going to give it away to somebody on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. And then people who didn't get their hands on Witcher 3 are going to be wearing the shirt that's not getting my hands on Witcher 3. It'd be great if he like, wore that the whole time he's reviewing it. Like, doesn't shower, doesn't sleep, same shirt. Like, I got my hands on you. Brandon, you have some explaining to do. I do have some small, it sounds like I did something, I didn't do anything. Well, you're, you're the mouthpiece, you have yeah. to. So, uh, uh, as the editor-in-chief of GameTrailers.com, it is my duty to tell you something that you everybody probably already knows. Uh, we lost some people this week. Uh, one I want to talk about specifically, but we also lost three other people. Uh, James Kohler, Kelly Campbell, and Max Song. Max Song you've seen on camera. James Kohler and Kelly Campbell you haven't. And they have been uh, on an administrative side part of Game Trailers for like a decade. I'm just making like a rough estimation. Yeah. Really long time. Before my time. Yeah, uh, we're all still kind of, I'm getting the feels right now. We're all still kind of reeling from it. Uh, most specifically, we lost the man who used to sit in that chair, Mr. Michael Damiani. Uh, he is, uh, we are currently negotiating this right now, but he is going to stick around to keep producing stuff for a while. Um, but uh, he's not going to be here forever. Um, and so he's going to be transitioning out. And that sucks. It's really all you can say on it, because none of us in this room were really a part of that decision, so... Sure, I have, um, a, I have a follow-up question. Yeah. Is, is Game Trailers dying? Uh... <laughs> He's taking a coffee <laughs> pause! <laughs> um, Game Trailers is always in a transition phase. I mean, like, I've, you know, it's, uh... Game, Game Trailers is not what it was when we started it. It's not what we was in 2005 when we started creating content. It's not what it was when Shane Satterfield came on and created an editorial team, which I never even thought we needed. Of like, oh, right, yeah, other people, right. We had like editors writing their own stuff, like guys that like had, no, you know, were not writing majors. They were just like, oh, games are cool, mad reviews. Like, what are we thinking? <laughs> um, so it's always been in a transitional phase. And that's what's cool about game trailers, game media. That's what's cool about video games in general. Like. I think you know we're gonna look back ten years from now at like how popular video games weren't now and just like laugh about it. So it's like we just have to weather the storm and keep going. We're all still here, you know. Like there's still lots of people that are making content. So, but uh, but Damiani, God, who doesn't love? What's there not to love about Damiani, a man who just is just mean to everybody all the time? But like, we all love him so much. Um, but I mean specifically, uh, uh, Pop Fiction, just genius. You know, such an amazing show. 
So uh, I, I, I'm almost assured he's going to land on his feet somewhere. So uh, we'll not be the last year hearing of Mike Damiani. But uh, that happened. That's the game trailer's so news Got to get that out of the way. But he had already uh, moved on to Greener, pa- greener Podcasts uh, earlier by leaving uh, GT Time. So at least we're prepped on that. You know, it was kind of a... Uh, uh, that lessens the blow a little bit for fans specifically of GT yeah. Time. I got to say that was hard for me. We, you got to think about that. Like there are people who, like never seen Timeline, never seen, never watched an episode of Pop Fiction. I guess and just know him from GT Time. There's, like, no, oh, like that there's nobody. Who's, no way. Yeah. Everybody knows. I, I think mean, so because I think a lot of people don't know that Damiani did those things. Everybody knows. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, Damiani did a lot of things. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Damiani was one of our best reviewers. Yeah. Um, there I said it. Yeah, um, and we again we've lost reviewers in the past, so we, we just got to keep uh, reassessing what we can do and keep doing stuff. The content won't stop. The content won't. The, the flow stop won't stop. Stop calling it content. That's where you get me. Is when you call that content. We strictly make videos and nothing else. Right. The videos won't stop. You could have easily said. Okay, videos won't stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, we're not making content. We're, we simply make videos. There's content in those videos. Elise, how did you start at Game Trailers? <laughs> well, uh, so I originally came to, to Game Trailers when a Jeremy Hoffman producer took a chance on an unknown kid and hired her as a PA on Game Trailers TV with Jeff Keighley. And you were a PA at the time, too. Um, in the PA hierarchy, it was like Kyle and then me. And I learned a lot from Kyle, learned a lot from like Jeremy and Megan Rue and Rohan Rebus, everybody that worked on GTTV. And, um, How'd you, how'd you get the interview? Because at the time, you lived in Canada. No, 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 I lived here. We, like, Skyped you, and the interview was, like, uh, no, Skyping I was, you. No, I was in Canada. I was at home visiting. Oh, that okay. Was, like, it just, it just was <laughs> terrible timing. That was unclear to me. I thought we yeah. were just interviewing this no, Canadian girl. No, I had lived here for, like, half a year. Oh, okay. Um, and then I just, I had, honestly, I had a, f- a friend that knew Jeremy. Uh-huh. And she was like, I think you'd be perfect for this job. And I said... I'm Elise, so I said, no, I'm probably not. And she said, like, Jeremy, I told him to just talk to you and, mm-hmm. like, get to know you. And I, I really owe having a job here to, to Jeremy. And yep. now, like, Brandon and yeah. Yeah, everybody. But, well, me too. But, but then Jeremy. Uh, when GTC... Jer- Jeremy hired me at G4. <coughs> he did? At G4. He hired and then me we, too. And then we both got hired at GT about the same time. We all... Oh, everything. Just for the record, I was in that room. <laughs> I remember having a conversation with Shane about, like... Daniel so we got, Random person A who I'll never remember, uh-huh. random person B who I'll never remember, and this strange chap named Daniel Bloodworth. And I was like, I like Bloodworth. I like <laughs> Are you dead serious? Because <laughs> you had to write a bunch of stuff, and you told me about like each of them personally, kind of like what they were like, you know. You had to do a writing sample. Oh yeah. And I was like, All right. cool. And I went through. And I was like, <coughs> do you remember what your writing sample was? Um, it was a Def Jam icon. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Is that because of your Snoop Dogg interview? This is pre- no, this predates your Snoop Dogg? This, this is, is him applying to be able to That's a good, that's a good pick, pick, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so Jeremy and Billy Bergkammer were my references to Shane, uh-huh. and then I sat down with Shane, uh, and then he gave me a tour of the offices, and he was like, okay, here's a game that you haven't played before. Uh, you have half an hour to uh, write as much as you can about it. Whoa. And like, is it preview nice. style or review style? Preview. Wow. But he said, uh, uh, well, at least Rich told me that apparently out of those people, I was the only one that had anything critical to say about this apparently awful game. So way back when, uh, the critical eye of Daniel Bloodworth. Assault. Won him the job. Uh, at least I remember the interview. I remember they said, what are you playing right now? And you said, Skyward Sword. Oh, was I? Uh, yeah. Nice. Trying and, to get through it. Trying and to I get think through you're being, the dribble. No, at the time you were being nice about it. You were being very supportive <laughs> of Skyward Sword. For a second there, I just imagined she's actually playing Skyward Sword in the interview. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like trying to get her attention. It's like, what are you, what are you playing right now? It's like, what? Up in Canada. Oh, oh, sorry, Skyward Sword. Because uh, after it, after we shut it off and we're like, we're, like, we had a little discussion afterward, Rohan was in the room too. I think it was me and Jeremy and Rohan and Megan. Yeah. And, uh, and Bobby popped in. Yeah. And... Uh, I was like, she likes Zelda. She's my, she's my favorite pick of the of the candidates. And then it turns out you hate Skyward Sword. I I'm sorry, Kyle, but you know I love all the good ones. We should have picked that other guy. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> he turned out to be super. We won't go into that, but that other guy turned out to be awful. Don't get me started on that other guy. Okay. Uh. So. <laughs> well, but I, I mean, I love game trailers. Um, yeah. Yeah, great. It was somebody in the comments last <laughs> yeah, week said uh, you should do a segment where each new person who fits in the guest seat talks about why they love game trailers. Yeah. And so there it is. Why? That's why you asked for it. You're the one who started this conference. So let's talk about Wait, corrections. Really? That's what? What? I filled in the gap there. That's what they'll... 
That's what they say? No, you were doing like a oh, they bit. they talk about, okay. They wanted to know about p history, how a person's Oh, you had already set that trailers. up. Okay, I didn't, uh, yeah. I didn't deprive the users of information <laughs> of any kind. No, you did not. Wait till I'm you get Ben one. Moore's. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Start corrections music. Uh, a PC can record gameplay. Yeah, they got me on that. Apparently they've added it into the newer cards since I bought my last card. Yeah. Which I am planning to upgrade. So that is not a console exclusive feature anymore. Oh, cool. Uh, Goro had been announced previously as a pre-order exclusive. I, I'm sure I said that in the show. Okay. Well, let's, that's a clarification then. Now it's oh, clarified. Whoops, that's a let's go to the trailers clarification too. Okay. Whoops. Now it's solid. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo might have the capability to automatically cross by, and I shouldn't have made that assumption. They might be able to do it. They're not in this instance, but they might be able to. Uh, GameStop does want your chargers. If you're trading in a 3DS, you're gonna have to have that charger with it. That's uh, crap. <laughs> yeah. Whole other conversation, I guess. Uh, Behemoth is the first entry if you type Goliath into thesaurus.com. Um, you're still screwing that up. <laughs> what? You're talking, if you're using them as adjectives. Hey, man. That's, you're talking about names, this is not, this is not, oh, this is a behemoth monster. No, it's... Yeah, it is. <laughs> Goliath. No, nah, I'm using... Hey, I'm going with the source. Now, I gotta go with the source. Goliath is a nine foot six human what? being. I'm gonna have to end the corrections music. Huge I'm gonna have to use animal that, that nobody end actually knows what it is. And same. It's also a roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. <laughs> What is Canada's Wonder? Before we get into news, oh gosh, no, you don't need to know. No, what is Canada's Wonderland? What is that? You can just, it's kind of like it's, it's like the Six Flags. It used to be Paramount Canada's Wonderland, um, but then they lost the license with Paramount. So like all the rides that were like the Italian job ride had to change the to Italian really job cool. ride. Oh, my oh yeah, gosh. you were in like Mini Cooper cars. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, there was a Top Gun Top Gun ride. So hold on, what did they change the Mini Cooper ride to? It's like movie ride or something, and then the Top Gun ride got changed to like Skyflyer or something. Man. I'm sorry, the, the Italian wow. job, the ride that was formerly Italian job is now called movie ride? I don't remember, I don't know the specific, it's something to do with like movies or I don't know. Wow. Man, I remember doing the Tomb Raider retrospective and yeah. like finding out stuff about like Tomb Raider roller coasters that got shut down and stuff. Like, what? It's crazy, it's crazy to think of like, I mean, growing up in Southern California, we have amazing theme parks here. So it's just crazy. I remember like hitting that point when I was like 10 or something. I'm like, wait, there are theme parks in other parts of the world? <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, what? People in Illinois are just going to roller coasters? Nobody told me about this? <laughs> But uh, yeah, just crazy to think of rides that come and go that like you'll never you'll never go on that ride. The movie ride. The Italian job <laughs> ride. I'm, bummer. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I'd love to ride a Top Gun ride. So are you in jets on the Top Gun ride? No, it's kind of just like Why would a, you be? <laughs> like this. A you're strapped sort of in roller coaster. You're sort of suspended on your stomach almost. Oh, okay. So um, you're the jet. You are the jet. Let's talk about video game news. Yep. Yeah, that's news. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, big event this week. Yeah. Microsoft held a big Windows 10 event. Which we all have to just trust you to tell us since you didn't send a run in to right before the show. Hey man, you could have watched the Windows 10 event. Couldn't have, I was on the road and editing your script. It, that, that, it, <laughs> here we go again. All right, let's just talk through this. Here's what we had to do. We had to do ultimate game no, no, preview. No, no. <laughs> and I had to write about action adventure games. I had to write about 10 different action adventure games. I had to do this thing, the Def Jam thing. I did this just like, here, write about games you don't know about. And then, okay, so Everybody Brandon, had to do if you're listening, Brandon is crying. He's weeping <laughs> tears of sympathy for me. So we'll move on, I got what I wanted. Um, uh, so uh, Windows 10, of course, why we're talking about this on a video game podcast is that a big chunk of this was talking about Xbox. How Xbox would integrate with Windows 10 and vice versa. Uh, so a lot of the things we talked, are, Windows 10 will be shoved into Xbox. When you update your Xbox, it'll become a Windows 10 machine. Already runs Windows of some sort at the moment. So uh, those will be oh, cross compatible and things weird. like that. Huh. That its operating system is a form of Windows. Well, yeah, well, yeah, and they would update it as being Windows 10. Yeah, it is specifically going to be Windows 10 running on your Xbox. Huh. Why is that weird? This is weird. Like they've never they've never mentioned their operating system as an operating system before, really. Related to Windows. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember when they said like we're running three different operating systems at once, and they show the layers? Remember when the Dreamcast was a Windows had the Windows logo on it? No. Somehow as they, as you loaded as you booted up. Yeah, that like yeah. it was a Windows operating system. We're back full circle. Okay, <laughs> so uh, what that allows us to do? What does it mean that my Xbox is Windows 10? Uh, you can stream games within your household. You can stream your games from your Xbox One to any other Windows 10 device, be that a, a laptop or tablet or PC. 
Is that an interesting feature? Well, it's an interesting way to catch up with everybody else. What do you mean by that? Well, you have the Wii U gamepad. Okay. You have the Steam. Vita. And you have the Vita. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, thanks, thanks, Microsoft. You're finally on board with, with everybody else now. Though, I mean, well, I mean, Nintendo and PlayStation can't stream to my laptop. They can't stream to my Windows tablet. Right. I mean, but it's, yeah, I mean, they're just different devices. Yeah. The only way I could see this being relevant is if, like, I'm a PC gamer and I just really like my chair that I play PC games in. It's just really comfortable. Even if I'm playing on a on a on a on a, on a like a, a wireless, like you know, 360 or Xbox One controller that works with my PC, mm -hmm. you just and, love that chair. And I just I'm hearing good things about Sunset Overdrive, mm -hmm. and I just don't want to play it on my couch. No, I, I I think it's the same kind of thing that people have been. I mean, it's it's the the thing that Nintendo never advertises that everyone mm -hmm. loves about the Wii U is that like I can be playing this when somebody else is watching the news or whatever, and like, you don't have to stop and interrupt and fight over that one TV. Can I make a prediction that you guys might think is a little radical? Please, I love those. Um, so, I mean, everybody kind of flipped out when Xbox was moving away from disk-based stuff and they wanted to eliminate a disk drive yeah. altogether. Myself included. Personally, I think that engaging with like tablet PC, pushing that like PC aspect, is Microsoft's way of maybe eight years from now there is no Xbox console. There's a client like Steam that is the Xbox client, and you will just be streaming your games from this client. You can download the Xbox Xbox client app then, and you don't necessarily, it, you know, people could make an Xbox One box like they would a Steam mm -hmm. machine, but I think that this maybe is Microsoft's way of like, we're gonna integrate everything and that way, like we can push toward just a digital-based client. Absolutely, because this is phase they want one. It, to be, it is, and it's a very, very like subtle way mm -hmm. of um, you know integrating all of us into this because they shocked everybody with their like DRM policy, and everyone flipped out. So now it's like. But the thing about this though is, it's you're still not you're still not running the you're game not, yeah, on you're your not. PC. Right. You're running it from the Xbox to something that has to be on the same Wi-Fi network. You're not going to be able to do that, take your laptop exactly. into work and play your Xbox from home. But so. this is Xbox's way of getting us comfortable with the idea. But it's like, if I'm streaming PS4 to my Vita, I got the controls on my Vita, so <coughs> how is, so does my controller has to be close enough to the Xbox that yeah. it's picking it up? I would think so. It just seems like such a weird, what are you oh, doing? Like, like your, why are you, your Xbox like, why One are controller you? will work with most. Yeah, like I got the tablet or I got the Vita. But yeah. it's like, why are you? If you're an Xbox player and you have a console, like why are you moving around? What are you doing? Like the Wii U has such poor range. What guys just like parkouring around his house playing the Xbox? It's like you have your space. I just imagine like, especially for people for like for like the, the the tradition of what I understand Xbox mostly to be and like what it was kind of founded on is like is multiplayer. It's like Halo multiplayer and like lots like lots of sports games, lots of like Call of Duty, big franchises like that, shooters and stuff. And so it's like that. I just I see those games being rooted in a very particular part of a person's domicile. That's just like, no, that's where I game. I just don't see them as being like, I want to play this in the kitchen it, right but now. Yeah, like, but that's what, what I'm saying, though. It's, you know, I played through most of Mario 3D World sitting on the couch, you know, next to my, my brother and his wife who were watching movies. Because you, know, you had the tablet. But that's what I'm saying. It's mm -hmm. like it'd be the same kind of thing. If I had my laptop, pop my laptop open and have the controller, yeah, know, I'm still I in the same room with everybody It's about else. sharing the living room. Yeah. Uh, good word, by the way, domicile. Right. Yeah, that's one <laughs> point for Brandon for that word. Yes. Cash that in. Okay, uh, let's talk about what else they announced. Game DVR. This is funny. Uh, you know, being able to record clips, you can do that uh, on your PC if you're streaming your Xbox games to your PC. Uh, very funny line from the press release in relation to the correction we had to make for Bloodworth this week. Uh, and there, this is what they say in their own press release. Uh, on Xbox One, one of the most popular features used by gamers is Game DVR, which gives simple access to recording, editing, and sharing out your most epic gaming moments. It's not easy or consistent to do that for PC games today. <laughs> so they're offering this, Game DVR, you know, you stream your Xbox games onto your <coughs> PC as like a simpler way to uh, capture your games. Is that appetizing? Um, if it works. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll have, to, I mean, again, I haven't looked into the, the cards, but I don't know, like, if, if the cards are already doing that and the software is, you know, Reasonable. Maybe it's just that the software is no, more you, you in line with the Xbox. You one. didn't hear Xbox. <laughs> they said it's not simple or easy to do right now. 
Well, it's because you have to go that extra mile to own it. Like, that's the problem. Anytime you're dealing with any kind of media software, it's like, anytime it's all inclusive, where it's like, we made the compression system, we're making the editing software, mm-hmm. we made the games, yeah. we're making the systems, then it's like, any interest that you have, like, well, I'm just going to filter this out, it's like, it's not going to want to do that. Like, I'm assuming, like, that would be my prediction, that it's like an all inclusive thing, where if you're capturing the stuff on PC, it's like, you're going to get a raw media file that you can just do whatever you want to with. Yeah, that's what I would hope, is you do get that sweet raw media file, because then right. it would be extremely convenient for anyone who wants to post up their sweet Halo headshots. Because we cat when we reviewed Little Big Planet 3, some of that was the share stuff we got on PS4 and some of that was stuff that we captured here and like they were different files. <laughs> like oh, you right. know like no, what do you, you mean? What, sorry? You just you put those into Premiere, and Premiere's like, okay, the, I, I, I'm identifying that those were not oh, I'm, if, I'm if not I just c- considering that quote unquote media. Like those are different file types. Those are different file yeah. types, yeah. And, and maybe not file types even, but just those are different compression settings. Like that's different. There's different stuff going on in these videos. Okay, well, um, how about this? So, Fable Legends will release on PC the same day as Xbox One, and they share. Compatible? They're cross compatible. They sa- share the same multiplayer environment. Still not excited. One environment or no, yeah? Well, no, wait, that's what I mean. Is like I can play with my yeah. PC buddies. Environment on my Xbox meeting, One. Some, not meeting yeah. like an actual get like right, the yeah. forest stage, but like a digital environment. Is okay. that yeah. already <laughs> happening with Project Spark? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, correction of music. Expect next week. I don't, I don't think, think it's happening with Project Spark. I mean, yet. I know Sony has done it several times in the past. Um, uh, PC and uh, PlayStation meeting. Yeah, uh, yeah, Portal Two. You could do that. Portal Two. Oh, you could yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, Unreal Tournament three way way back in like two thousand six no or seven. Yeah, people on PlayStation, I guess two at the point. No PS three. PS three were playing against PC players. Mm-hmm. Did they get owned because they don't have a mouse? I think so. Okay, <laughs> I imagine um, it would just be a bloodbath. Um, and then I know there have been more recent ones where yeah. Uh, well, for instance, when Street Fighter Five announced it recently, it was yeah. a big deal when they said, "Well, you'll be able to play on PC and PlayStation 4," and that was like an announcement. Uh, Xbox comes out and says this own announcement. I think it's still a big deal. It's not something Xbox typically does. It says you can play your PC people with uh, Xbox people. Well, no, they haven't been putting games out on PC. But if they're mov- moving toward one Xbox client eight years from now, exactly, it won't matter what yeah. you're playing it on. Your theory is not so unlikely. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah. Uh, to me, like, there's, there, there should be some way that they can figure out how to, y- at least make uh, Xbox One games just playable on a PC. You know. Do you mean like Fable Legends? Yeah. I mean, it's like either you can just stick the disc into the PC, oh. or, <laughs> or it, it's a cross buy type thing. You know, where it's like, okay, you have you own this game. Yeah. And now, if you want to play it on PC as well, just download it. It's so weird. I mean, Fable Legends is going to be run better on a PC than it will on an Xbox One. And so would like any PS4. Like, X- PC games are just the better versions of those games because, you know, the, yeah. your PCs are limitless. And so it is, oh man, it's weird. It's weird crossing the streams. I mean, we want, we want cross compatibility, right? Like, yeah. But it's not going to yeah. happen a lot. You know, it's like you can make a big deal about this one yeah. game, but it's like how many games? Like it won't really happen for Halo. Full? Halo will never be a game you can buy for your PC. Halo Five, I mean. Although it should be, you know, like, it, yeah, it, it absolutely should be. Should it be. should be that one. Like that's the one that they should talk about. <laughs> like, you showed us the video. You want to make sure, like, I want to make sure you see the Xbox video before we start GT time. You watched yeah. it, and I'm just like, there's way too much Fable Legends gameplay in this. You know, <laughs> as far as like, as far as being like, hey guys, Windows, Xbox, let's talk. Look at this year we're gonna have, and like Fable Legends is the game you show. It's like, that's not. You can show Fable Legends, but don't just show Fable Legends. Like, don't. Yeah. Don't, well, would, don't talk about the tech and then ramp the music up when I it's would like say just then, like cinemas from the game. It's like I've seen that. <laughs> uh, as you were talking about the uh, yeah Halo, like the same thing with Unreal Tournament. Like, yeah, you wouldn't want to have those. Like for for an FPS, like for you, an would, FPS, you wouldn't want to have those groups too risky. together. Those analog sticks too slow. Yeah. Can I ask you guys? Uh, question whether you believe this statement is true or false. We will never see cross compatibility among consoles, PlayStation, Xbox. Oh yeah, I don't think that they would allow it. I think that they're I think I've talked to publishers actually they're like, yeah this works, but we can't do it. Yeah, I think they hate each other too much still. I think PlayStation and Xbox like they they don't want to be cross compatible. I mean never saying never. Like I'm hoping to live for like what, forty Fifty more years, maybe. That'd be, be fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, in that, who knows? In that time, that's about as old as the industry is. So it's like in another, you know, industry point two. 
But there yeah. have been talks since, oh my gosh, since the 16-bit days of convergence and everything will just be one box one day and never. that never happens. No. Sega and Nintendo, never say never. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so the most exciting thing to come out of this event to me, we can talk about HoloLens, but the most exciting thing to me, Phil Spencer walked out wearing a Battletoads shirt. That's the most exciting thing. That is the most exciting. All this not. rumor of it's going to be a big year for Rare, and, and all we get out of it is Phil Spencer wearing a Battletoads shirt. I think it's a big indicator of a Battletoads game. So just, Didn't just he <laughs> say something that, like, it's not? It doesn't matter. He made, <laughs> a, sta he made a statement. I didn't read it. He was yet. wearing the shirt with a Battletoads logo on it. Humor me for one moment. What would a Battletoads game be like today? Like, well, how do you make a Battletoads game today? Donkey Kong Country Returns. You just you make it 2D? Make it, yeah, yeah. You make it look, you know, great, but then you... Do a lot of the the back. Uh, what was the other? There's some game where you could do that too. A little big planet where you can make oh, yeah. huge jumps to the back now, not just like hopping up onto a ledge, but like. You're right. The old Battletoads game is kind of like that. Like yeah. it is a 2D game, but you could, you know. So if they're on the bikes, yeah. like it's mostly going left to right, but like it does jump into the back every now and then and make it brutally difficult. And at least, what's your Battletoads game? They could try to go like full TMNT, where they like it's like Battletoads. Or they could try to do like like the recent like Turtles arcade game. They could just be like do do like a small digital release. Yeah, That's but that like, yeah. that like one stunk fans. big time. Yeah. I'm, oh, it did. I haven't played it yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The remake of Turtles in Time <laughs> that was just a, a stinky little tuna sandwich. Uh, <laughs> um, wait, hold on. What was your first idea? You said TMNT. It would be like Battletoads. Like, I'm talking like yeah, like Michael Bay's like Ninja Turtles. Like thing. they're realistic looking. Not even realistic looking, but they just go. They're cool battle toads. They're like awesome battle toads. They're they're rat you know. Don't say that they're not. They're, that they are cool already. Mm -hmm. They, they are, are cool, cool already. But yeah. I mean cool. Mm -hmm. Like battle toads for the twenty first century. What does that mean to you? What do you want? The, what? How do you want zits to change? I don't. I don't want them to change at all. I don't want them to change at all. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't about what I want. No, you're game director. Yeah, you're game director. What is the, What is the call you're making? The call I would be making yeah. would be to make a just a a good Turtles in Time esque Battletoads. Okay. Not like shitty remake Turtles in Time Battletoads. Blood, what but is your Battletoads? Um, <coughs> not sure if like going like I, th I feel like yeah side scrolling would still probably make the most sense in some way, but yeah it'd be cool if they're like. Uh, Kind of like if they kept that art style in a way, like if they kept it looking, you know, like a 2D game, but maybe not necessarily actually being 2D, but like had a good, like, cell shading animated look to it. My Battletoads <laughs> is like Uncharted. What? Yes, it is so serious. You are just a huge freaking toad with m huge muscles, likes the running really fast, jumping over ravines, crashing down, making things explode. The, you could do so much with battle toads. Like, think of Uncharted just being a toad. You at home, think of the same thing and think about how good that I is. Can't. And there's no guns. Your arms are turning into things, they turn into anvils as you punch things. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I was I was thinking as far as like isometric battle toads. Like I could do a gauntlet battle toads. Oh, a gauntlet battle toads is a really good <coughs> idea. Okay, so there you have it, Phil Spencer. Uh, that's what we think you should do. Uh, please take that note, and we'll move on. Uh, so wait, should we talk about Hololens? Is anyone interested in Hololens? I I, I saw tweeting about it, but I didn't actually see what it is. <laughs> so <laughs> it's basically a, it's a VR headset, but it's AR. You know what I mean? It, it, you have okay. some translucency, so you see things within your world. Like, oh, there's a globe on my desk. I can spin this around. Uh, but the video they put out with it was definitely a concept video, more so than a, like, this works now. This is a product that's working right now. A lot of people fairly connected it to the Project Natal video of years past, where just none of those things came true. <laughs> hmm. We have all these technologies. We have like motion, VR, and AR. They're all so cool, and there's so much potential. And we like start a conversation where it's like, I mean, what do we, you know, do we are we excited about this? It's like, hell yeah, I'm excited about that. You know, it's like that's what we've been talking about. It, it's an amazing technology, but it's such a no-brainer at the same time. It's like, how many movies have we seen where people are doing that? Like, mm -hmm. how many things now even just have like the car where they're like in a car chase and they're like checking things on like the hood? But like, none of these work. Motion. How many <laughs> years? When did the Wii come out? 
How many years have we been waggling? Man, it's almost like a full decade of motion, and it's like, it's okay. You yeah. Know? But the potential is mind blowing, you know, like when it actually works, when it actually, like, even in the Zelda demo, where they were like, oh, uh, and I, if you see, I can move the gamepad to move the camera, like, like ridiculous lag. Just like, oh my God, no, there's, I wouldn't do that. I would never move it that way unless it was, like, right on, you know, like, um, like, ironically, like, Time Crisis was, you know, like old, like, arcade games that, like, had tracking. Yeah. Were just perfect, you know, and, like, we need to get to that point. Before uh, you actually want to buy it and invest in it, but like potential will be cool forever. And I guess like decades from now, we'll actually finally get a good motion game. Well, since you're trailer guy, do you think it makes sense to put out a concept trailer for a technology? Totally. You think that was a good call to do like the Hololens and like show a guy walking around his like kitchen and like? Yes, because you'll remember it. If it, it was a fail, if everybody like no one was talking about it and everybody was just like whatever, but it's like God, you remember that thing? It's like that's what they were, you know. It's one of the rare times when like executives actually communicate to the like their entire company by being like this. This, this is, what, is we're what we're going yeah. forward. So if they had shown you like a Disney, like they did the Minecraft demo, like <laughs> video, if they had shown you a Disney Infinity like toy box like that, would you have been pumped for it? Or would I, you I am as way? pumped for it as I would have been if they had shown that. You know, it's like I can I can imagine that. Like I can picture all of those things. It's weird, man. Uh, just set up, okay, I'm just, okay, 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 right now, just like what popped <laughs> in my head. So you got your glasses, like your glasses are tied to your thing. So imagine when you have, <laughs> when you get trophies, Kyle, when you play Uncharted 4 and you get all the trophies, you actually get a virtual Nathan Drake that in your room, wherever you play games, you can put it somewhere and it'll always be there. The game will like remember that it's there. So when you sit down and play PS4 and you put your, those, your PS4 goggles on or whatever, or mm -hmm. your Valve goggles yeah. or whatever, like your environment changes to like, when you play World of Warcraft, like you're actually in like an orc stronghold with all of these things decorating your room. It's like, what is that? Two, 2040, you I kinda, guess? But it'll be amazing when Brandon, it happens. You kind of hit on why I'm not interested in this. I think AR is the wrong thing to invest in in the year, the age of VR. Like, when I want to put on goggles, I don't want to just like play Minecraft on my coffee table. I want to be in the freaking Minecraft world. But you're not. And that's the biggest problem for me is like, I, that's fantastic. I love that. Like, I can watch scary movies and my wife can't. Like, there's a fundamental difference about her being like, I cannot disassociate that illusion. Like, I, I see this stuff and for like two seconds, I literally think that's happening and I fear for my life and it's not a good feeling. Uh -huh. It's like, I'm always like, whatever, I don't care. So when I play that stuff, my brain's like, no. I'm like, oh, I'm playing Team Fortress. And my brain's like, you're not. Something's, I don't trust, what are you doing? You know, it's like skydiving. It's like, what are you doing? Like, I, I as a brain don't agree with this. Your brain's you know, not like, going to like this that. This is Nathan, not an activity. But your brain's not going to like that Nathan Drake trophy that you My brain's going to be like, you're looking at a virtual environment. Just like when my brain looks at an infinity toy, it's like, yeah. that's not Jack Skellington, it's a toy. <laughs> it's a virtual thing. Whereas like when you do it VR, it's not the same. VR is like, no, you're the, you're at you're in this villa in Italy. It's like, I'm not. I'm staring at Pixel. Like, I can't, you know. And that is. I, I don't, I'm, I'm still not sure we'll see that in our lifetime. Like actual, you know, you know, like, Submersive. did you know that whole show that just came out on Fox or Comedy Central is entirely CG? It's like, what? You know, like, yeah, no yeah, way yeah. you could do that now. No, no way you'll do that in 10 years. You know, so but like, but this is kind of a fun stopgap. This is like, again, it's like, what movies have you seen now? There's even like present day movies. Like it used to be in just future movies. And now like on CSI, they're like, well, if we bring up this, uh, you know, like real time simulation, mm -hmm. it's like, what, you know? Yeah, yeah. Par Parks and Rec just went four years yeah. in the, or I guess four years in the future and they all have like ridiculous technology yeah. now and it's incredible, it's great. Um, Google Glass just busted, so. What do you mean they busted? Like you can no longer. Yeah, like, they, they canceled oh, no. it. Yeah. Google but Glass is did, done? Did Google Hoffman Glass? tell you? No, there's just been stuff everywhere. Like Google Glass is essentially not dead, but it's kind of not really an active like, um, like technology that they're pursuing anymore, right? Which to bring it back to what you were saying, <coughs> sorry, to bring it back to what you were saying with, about the trailer specifically, yeah. is it smart to do that trailer? Yes. Is, 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 are some of the ways that they portrayed their technology in the trailer the way you should do it? Maybe not. Right. As far as like being, you know, being like, you know, get ready. It's like, if you don't say when to get ready and you don't have an idea of like, hey, we don't, you know, as much as I, we bemoan that Star Wars Battlefront thing, like they're at least honest, you know, and they came out where they're just like, hey, we're just, we, we're stoked that we got this, we, we, we got this project and we're working on it, but it, we don't really have anything to show you. Uh, I was watching that old Natal trailer with Huber and it is hilarious to see today. It's a family of four. The daughter is driving a car. It's an indie car. So it's like an indie racing game. Bloodworth, you're you're fun to watch play racing games, but I wouldn't sit and watch you do a whole indie race. The whole family's <laughs> cheering her on in her little indie car, and then she goes to a pit stop, and the dad's like, "Hold on a second. He runs up and he like puts on the new tire in the pit stop. 
<laughs> it's like, okay, little girl, you're good to go. So he sits back on the couch, and then she's like shifting gears. None of those things happen. Almost none of the things in the Natal trailer happen. <laughs> and if you if you had a guy that was like, imagine this, and it's like, oh, cool, I imagined yeah. it then, as opposed to like, no, we did, you know, their family's doing this right now in special labs at Microsoft. Like, I can't uh, believe. I can't believe we let them get away with it then, and I can't believe that we still let them get away with it today. We I'm should happy say, it exists, don't, though. Don't make that trailer. If it makes me laugh this much, I'm, I'm happy they made it. <laughs> Worth it for the lols, I guess. Okay, so let's talk about some other news. Uh, Evo uh, announced its games that competitors will play uh, this year. Interesting about Evo, it is the biggest fighting game tournament of the year, and in a weird way, when it says these are the games that will be at our tournament, it's kind of like these are the important fighting games of the year. Uh, because I mean, this is this will have the biggest audience. Sorry, let me get my list of the games: Ultra Street Fighter 4, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Super Smash Brothers for Wii U, Guilty Gear Xrd Sign, <laughs> Killer Instinct, Mortal Kombat X, yet to be released, will be released in April. Wow. Persona 4 Ultimax, Persona 4 A Arena Ultimax. Super Smash Brothers Melee you had one job. and Tekken 7. I had I didn't even I'm just looking at the logos. Uh, so uh, interesting thing about that: two Smash Bros. games at Evo, which had just brought in Melee back. You know what I mean? It, it took a long time for them to even get Melee back in there. And now there's two Smash Bros. games at the most serious competitive fighting game tournament. Is that crazy? It's crazy that t it took Melee so long to earn its stripes, and yet uh, Wii U gets the pass right away. X, a game that's not even out. They're like, oh, it's balanced enough. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like that seems like a like a PR move as opposed to really like it seems we long. believe, you know, which is fine for them. I mean, yeah. I mean, especially if you have all those different games and have some mainstays of people. I've been talking forever. What? What do you think? Um. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hold on. Why did that just become aware to you? What, what happened? No, well, I, I first I, I first jumped in because I had something to say, and then uh -huh. I'm just like, I think you were making valid points, though. You were making valid points, Brandon. <laughs> You're the level-headed, rational one. Right. This week, um, blood's will, irrational. Blood's to conclude, out. they can do PR. I think that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, strange to me. I, I I do not have a long history with Evo. Uh, I should make more time to watch esports. I don't. Um, but um, um, to know like the guys who do announcing and the guys like who the big uh, players are. Watching a MOBA esport bores me to tears. <laughs> Watching Evo, I could eat it up all day Honestly, long. I would rather watch the fans than the game uh, if I went to events right. like that. I would just love to just like ask them questions and just absorb myself in the oh, culture. Oh yeah, and they're very well produced. Oh, they're so good. Have you ever um, been to a live event, like live fighting? Event? No. Um, I can't imagine, it's gotta be insane. It's gotta, you have to feel probably so energetic being there. I went to, I went to League of Legends Worlds with Ben when, he, when we did that thing and Chris was there too. Uh, people were like leaving. It was so boring and really? weird. The, I don't mean the crowd wasn't crazy at League of Legends. I don't mean League of Legends. But I would love to go. From to my Evo. experience with working with both <laughs> Patrick Morales and Justin Spear, my understanding yeah. of fighting games was that if you were to get on that list, that was necessarily like these are the games that people are talking about. It's like these are the games that are proven. Like if we put two guys down and one of them wins, well, us as Evo were saying that guy, that guy won. And yeah. just making that determination when Mortal Kombat X is like. Really? Okay. Yeah. Especially with all like the divides that all the characters are taking, where it's like, who knows what's the more powerful Raiden or whatever. Like, even stranger, Tekken Seven appears on this. Tekken Seven uh, will be released in arcades in Japan in February. <laughs> uh, will not be released on consoles by the time this event happens. Uh, so, y if you want to compete there, if you want to compete in Tekken Seven, you either have to move to Japan and hit up the arcades, or go to select events, undisclosed events that will happen in the future, and just hope to become a master of the game on those few handful of particular events. It's interesting. It's like cars, it's like racing games not having damage because they're like, no, we don't want our cars to look bad. It's like, <laughs> if you're a fighting game, you just throw your game into a tournament right away. Just like, it can take it. It's like, what if it can't? Or like, what if, what if actually a lot of people say negative things about it because they're like, I didn't like the way yeah. I handled that tournament. And I guess you can work with the pedigree. You can know, like, you know, Tekken's good for it. <laughs> Another rounds are good for it. Right, They're oh, good yeah. for it. It works. You know they can patch it. If it's not working, they'll patch it. But that's that is crazy to me. That actually, that they'll be comp competing on the arcade cabinets for Tekken Seven. It does, as Brandon say, seem a little PR-y. A little seem a little fishy. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like there's a sense of maybe not necessarily PR-y, but you know they're they're trying to widen their audience a bit. You yeah. Know? And 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 you know I'm sure. You know, as as big as this is in the minds of the community, like it's it's not actually all that big, and so like they're probably trying to to grow and become more profitable and like make this, you know, the the kind of an event that it deserves to be. So, 
you'll still maybe have like you know those those top tier games where people you know are like really dialed in and, and Street Fighter. Yeah, and like yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, it's entirely about skill. But yeah, like you look at Smash Brothers and it's like yeah, you can do the entirely about skill thing too, but it's it's not always as interesting yeah. <laughs> as having all the craziness going on. So I, I don't know. I, I think it's and, and then Mortal Kombat is you know like you said, we'll just we'll have to see. Um, but but I think it's you know to get more people in there and like there's a lot of Mortal Kombat fans. There's a ton of Smash Brothers fans, um, and 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 having the new one in there already, uh, you know I think they know that like yeah there are people that want to see the new game, but there are people that are you know hardcore melee players have been playing melee forever. And I mean they do do better numbers. Like they could, they could put in Blaze Blue, and Blaze Blue would get some fiercely competitive players. But both of those Smash Brothers games will do better than Blaze yeah. Blue will. Right. Like the Wii, like the Wii U version is going to get more views, but the melee version is going to be talked about more. Or, or people are going to be more anticipating who's going to win that melee tournament as opposed to Wii U. It's kind of like I feel like melee has more cred. Melee has more cred. Wii U is like the it's the the fresh meat. It's like oh, who's actually going to be the greatest character? Yeah. There's Ooh. no fox yet for that. You We're know? all playing it on the same controller anyway. So right, <laughs> they're not going to be playing that. What if they're not? The the guy who won, what, I guess, was last oh, year. Oh yeah. Uh, he won at Evo at Ultimate Street Fighter with Four. With gamepad. He or won no? with a PlayStation One controller. Whoa. As Rose, that was cool. So who knows? Luffy was that his name? Correct okay. me. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's talk about Club Nintendo. Oh, Done. Wow. R.I.P. RIP Club Nintendo. <coughs> uh, Nintendo says, we're not doing this anymore. Uh, however, we are going to do a new loyalty program. Blood shook his head immediately. What is, what is wrong with the new loyalty program? Uh, they can't even get back to like how good the program was in the 90s. How good was it in the 90s? Like, I was, that's like where I got my first soundtracks from. Like, you know, yeah. like you, you used to the Nintendo Power thing, you would, you know, you could order soundtracks and all that. And and they've never I I think very rarely have they had a a soundtrack available on Club Nintendo and then it's like r like snatched up. Well, uh, and in Japan it's constant. Like they're putting yeah. out like special releases, like all these like they had this whole series of compilations where they had like the Peach healing music and the Bowser like crazy metal music. Yeah, you never you don't. I've got these albums. I'm gonna let you listen to. It. I would love to listen. But to it's some like a Peach compilation, yeah. so it's like. So they've got like all of these different Nintendo franchises mixed in, and like they had like F songs from the F Zero X disc drive expansion. Cool. On the Bowser album, you know, <laughs> and then stuff all the way back to the NES. So do you think that's because there are too many of us in in these United States? Is it just like a logistical issue of just like no, they're sorry, you're, there are too many Nintendo fans in this country. I don't know. I, I don't know what the issue is. I feel like there's some lawyer out there that's worried about some kind of licensing with music and doesn't want to deal with it. And we're so, a no, we're not going to do that. comfortable with the phrase healing music. No, I don't think of that, but I'm just like going through the process of copywriting. Are sure. There, do, you know, do you know the numbers if there I were like more Nintendo Club North America subscribers in Japan? No one will ever know those numbers. No, I feel they're like very secretive about them. I feel like the Japanese fans are just more, they're more like fervent and, and they just, they want that stuff so much more than maybe the North American audience does, I don't know. The one reason I would doubt that is Amiibo sales. Are ami Amiibo sales higher in North America? Yeah, in North America? yeah because we're, we're a little weird about stuff like that. I, I feel like the U.S. is just as fervent. We got so many weirdos. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, I, I mean, look at the weirdo stuff. They, they, like, like, there's, oh, there's a Sorry, game. Sorry, I gotta stop. If you love Amiibo, you are a weirdo, but I say that lovingly. The weirdo <laughs> I don't say is an insult. I'm a weirdo myself. Please don't. Also, there's no S for Amiibo weirdos. It's just Amiibo weirdo. It covers you know, multiple. <laughs> okay, weirdos, so they're just weirdo. Is but it, I'm sorry for interrupting. Is the plural of Amiibo just Amiibo? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I've seen That's it. That's one of those things we can laugh about. Oh. It's like, yeah. it's like um, Ubisoft. Yeah. It's just It's just wrong. But Ubisoft, yeah. Yeah. I have no, 18 Ubisoft's Amiibo. Ubisoft's the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. Everybody says Ubisoft. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> but yeah, you know, like, I mean, just look at the stuff that they've had. Like, they've got weird little, like, you know, novelty versions of Game & Watches. They've got paper fans. I've got, like, a hand towel in my bathroom that's a Mario hand towel. It, like, a lot of it is just, it's weird, it's, like, random stuff. And, like, the things that I would be maybe more interested in, like, a figurine 
or like a soundtrack. It's like, yeah. they, like Nintendo is like just not even putting, gone. making them out. It'll available. never happen now. I do want to talk about like maybe hypothesizing what it might be. I got a tweet from at Jake's underscore WK wondering if it might be something closer to PlayStation Plus. Do you mm -hmm. think Nintendo could do a PlayStation Plus? I think that they've kind of laid the groundwork for that already. I mean, with the whole you buy one game and then the next game is cheaper thing that they've been talking about. They talked about that a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they did that sort of with the Mario Kart DLC, where like if you buy both, then it's it's mm -hmm. cheaper and then you get the bonus characters. So do you think this will be launching that? It'll be launching their loyalty program, Probably. where the more games you buy, the cheaper games will become. Which isn't necessarily how PlayStation Plus works. PlayStation yeah. Plus is you give them 50 bucks and then you get cheap things all year long. Which I would love that from Nintendo. Like if, if I pay them a $50 subscription and then like one month they just give me Donkey Kong Country Returns, I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. It'd be so good. It'd be it'd so be, good. I think it'd be very successful for them. Yep. Yeah. It's got a lot of hard drives. <laughs> <laughs> I did it actually. I hooked up a hard drive to my Wii. I'm one of those people. I did it. And I never looked back. It's so I, I have to do it, yeah. I yeah. Mean, I bought two games up. and I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I barely, I just like wedge Tropical Freeze in there and just like, get in there. Mm -hmm. It was Bayonetta 2, crushed it. Just like, you need to buy a hard drive. I'm like, fine, I'm going to do it. Mm. Isn't that stupid? I should be buying discs. I'm just going right into Microsoft's future. <laughs> playing right into their plan. Uh, so, yeah, do you, but like, what could it, so this weird plan, buy more games, games will become cheaper. Like, how do you communicate that? How do you even, like, make that work? I don't know if Nintendo will be able to communicate that effectively to people that they actually, like, are excited about it and want to do it. They'll just feel like Nintendo's trying to get them to buy more games. And the <laughs> payoff maybe isn't that much. Right. I mean, and I'm, I'm assuming there won't ever be, like, cute little hand towels for Bloodworth's bathroom anymore. Like, that's probably no. dead now, yeah? Uh, no, I think that's some of that stuff will still... But, I mean... They still have the Nintendo store where they have, I'm sure, a lot of crazy stuff that we don't even know about unless you do a little tour. There needs to be a monthly Nintendo loot crate. Do you mean the one in New York City? Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, they should do that. Yeah. Th that's like, <laughs> we're giving you more. <laughs> Phil Spencer, close your ears. We're talking to Nintendo now. Uh, uh, they don't have hand towels at the Nintendo store. Not yet. Sure. <laughs> and Nintendo news. OK, uh, so. Minor bits to bring up. Oh, one thing that was announced this week that's kind of cool. Uh, Borderlands uh, 2 and Borderlands pre-sequel coming to your 8th gen consoles. So you're saying it's kind of cool because I've said that from day one? You said that from day one, <laughs> the moment pre-sequel pre was announced. <laughs> Bloodworth said, no, this is coming to next gen, don't worry about it. And it has, it is. They, they didn't even wait to get out of the fiscal year. It's like it's <laughs> launching before the end of the quarter. Wait, what do you mean by that? It's coming out before March 31st. So, uh, sorry, I'm never aware of fiscal quarters or things like that and like when you should make an announcement and when you so should So they usually things. like wrap up uh, the, the fiscal year like end of March. That's, that's why you see so many games get like shoved into that like March timeline. Okay. So that they can still like have that on their, their books for the year. And it's surprising that they didn't shove it into March? No, it's, it's no they did. Uh -huh. I'm just saying it's like, they couldn't even. They didn't even wait. Like, <laughs> they didn't even wait till the next year to to have it. It's like, yep, this just came out, and now here's the new version. Which is it kind of promising if you think about it? Because if they're looking at their long term prospects, you know, and this isn't something that they're like, well, we would we would need that to kind of cushion that area where we have nothing going on or no other announcements to make. You're so saying like, next fall there could potentially be maybe a maybe maybe they're confident. Maybe we'll get a Borderlands three announcement this the thing, summer or something. Yeah. The thing three. that annoys me the most about it <coughs> is. Okay, we all knew. Like, everybody in their right minds knew that this was going to happen. And yet they would keep saying, it's like, oh, no, it's only for old gen, only for old... So the, the people that are, like, really hardcore Borderlands players, and I've seen comments out there, like, they're, they're going to buy the game again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. clever. It's, I mean, that's how you get people to buy they it. They could have bought course. it once yeah. on their new system that they just bought. Yeah. But no, they had to... You know, make sure their old system was still hooked up by this game, and now they're gonna buy it again. 2K's bird dog in this. That's what's happening. Define bird dog. Uh, it's like kind of when you like deceive, betray, undermine, uh, like bird dog somebody. Hoodwink. Yeah. Bamboozle. You hoodwink, you bamboozle them, you, you, know, bird dog. you give them a little one two slipperoo. Mm -hmm. 
You bird dog him. Ian knows what I'm talking about. Bird dog him. Uh, yeah, I, I could see it that way. I mean, and it's like a good deal too. It's sixty dollars for both those games, all the DLC that has oh. ever existed within those two games. It's a it's a steal. It's just they, hard to I mean, get people excited about it. I yeah, think. they weren't bird dogging people with Borderlands Two. It's not like Borderlands Two came out and it was just like, well, we should probably wait until this comes out on next gen consoles. Um, so you get that too. Yeah, you get your old Borderlands Two. Um, yeah, it's tough for the fans, but I imagine it's mostly for people. That's like. At least for me, like there's a lot of you know franchises that I didn't play in last gen. It's just like, oh, it's just such a good opportunity to like, well, I should, yeah, I should play this now. If I got that, it would to me it'd be like so daunting. All of that Borderlands and all the DLC, you're j I was just like now thinking of like numbers popping off of enemies. Like I just have to do that so much to play through both of these games and all of their DLC. One thing that would be interesting to see if people can start doing, which we are getting now, like Sunset TV with Sunset Overdrive, we are getting kind of like a, a splinter advertising chain that like really tries to talk directly to their community. And like the trailer is a little self-referential where like all the, te uh, the, the texts are like, yeah, obviously, <laughs> you know, here yeah. it comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Borderlands thing, like you knew this was going to happen. So, like, I wonder if they can even push a little further there and just kind of be like, we, we get it. I mean, we're, you know, we, we know what we did. I'm sorry, but I mean, what, you know, we're trying to make money on this darn thing, like, yeah. you know. And the more money, you know, that we make, the more we can invest in the next stuff that we're doing. So, it's kind of tough. I don't know. I just don't. I just don't think you have to be my <laughs> actor <laughs> yeah. with three sequel that came, came out to know it wasn't going to be on next gen console. I think I think it's just like it really falls <laughs> in the camp of like. Obviously, you know. So it can I'm, be I'm over in the corner of the room with my Red Dead Redemption banner, being like, "It could happen," you know, like <laughs> yeah. for that remaster. But like, I doubt it, you know. But yeah. Like that was so obvious. Is Assassin's Creed a uh, rogue obvious? Will that happen? No. No, not because um, of sales. Like, sounds like. Uh, I don't. Like, I don't know. Though. I do. think it they could still. Four, I think it like, could still happen. Okay. I think it could still happen. Um, it might not be given a lot of fanfare, it might be kind of slipped out there, but I think the fact that they put Liberation on consoles says that... Yeah, and you're right, Liberation was kind of just like, here it is, if Maybe you like pre-order Victory and you get it for free or right. something, yeah. you're like... That'd be nice. Be a rogue. They're gonna have a hard time getting those Victory pre-orders. <laughs> I still find it really weird that they put out that America's Collection yeah. thing yeah. I forgot about before that. Before Rogue, yeah. when like, yeah. well, you're... Yeah, here's the rest of the America's collection. <laughs> Ubisoft, that was foolish. <laughs> That's like uh, five Star Wars movies before the sixth one comes out. Maybe they thought that like you play the American co America collection to like get ready for Rogue, but like people didn't do that. Yeah, people didn't care. I remember I got Alien and Aliens on VHS way back in the day because it came with a box set of the making of Alien Three. Oh, great! I was mm -hmm. like, well, I don't care to own Alien Three, so sweet. And I got yeah. I got both those movies for like seven bucks because it's in some bargain bin. Did you watch the making of Alien Three? Oh, for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I had it, you know. You had it. Hey, why not? Uh, it was on VHS, so like you had like. You know, it was a whole ritual watching media back then. Now we're just like, whatever. No, describe the describe the ritual of watching something on VHS. Well, it was like, you know, we're talking about digital, and you just like go home. Even like the Wii U is just kind of like, let's just let's do this. Opening screen, I don't even want you. I want my 3D world right now. Yeah, I love I'm that. I'm impatient. The quick start menu is what he's or referring to. Or before you like open up the NES thing, take the game off the shelf, remove it from the sleeve, <laughs> slide it in, click it, close it. Push it, the light turns on. How good you does know, that like, power button feel on the NES? Still. Yeah. yeah, there's a spring in there and a click. I mean, just VHS <laughs> tapes, you know, there's a whole like, there were like, it was just like old modems. There were like eight sounds and you yeah. knew them all by heart, you know, yeah. with the VHS. You know. It's like, it's, it is. It's like <laughs> taking it's, its movie boom. into its, itself. Stuff now. Yeah. I'll be watching something on my phone realizing like, if I went to go get my iPad, it would look way better, but I'm already watching the video, yeah. so whatever. <laughs> uh, what a sad kind. state this Rewind. is. Yeah. Uh, one last thing. Uh, this is like a, a public service announcement. This weekend only, you can get 10% off your entire cart, shopping cart, on the PlayStation Store. And this was uh, their way of repenting for being down because of Lizard Squad over the holidays. Mm. And you get five extra days of uh, PlayStation Plus if you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber. Is that weird? Is that weird that it's like, here, for this weekend only, you get 10% off your entire shopping cart? That's nice. I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's not a huge thing, but, you know, I'm sure there are people that will want to take advantage of it. The way to take advantage of it is to throw as much as you can into your shopping cart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, is them just making a ton of money. Yeah, it's, it's a way for them to make a lot of money in essentially apologizing to us, but then they yeah. reap the benefits. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, it is a little twisted. It's a little twisted. But I mean, it is 10%, like if you plan on buying anything this yeah. weekend, use it. Yeah. But don't go out of your way to spend money to save money. That's where, that's where Americans get foolish. Yeah. Boy, does it, we were just like, oh, the savings, I gotta get the savings. I'll just spend all my money to get savings. Like, don't do that, don't. It really, it honestly, like outside of this podcast, frustrates me a lot. No, you like drink Diet Coke instead of regular Coke, but you drink like five times the Coke, Diet Cokes. That's like, that yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't add up. Okay. But so you can just, get the code on the blog, PlayStation blog. You can get the code? The code, you need to get a code to get the 10%. I didn't know you need a code. Yeah, you get it on the PlayStation blog. Apparently. What's the code? Did you what do is it? a Canadian accent on that one? It's because Did I say it I'm weird? mirroring, I'm mirroring. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, wait, so where do, you get the, where do you get the code? I don't know. All code. I know is that the code will be available on the PlayStation blog. Is it, is it a long code? It should be a short code. Okay. Is, it should be like, where's Sherry? That should be the code. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Weird apology, but appreciated nonetheless. Uh, <coughs> shoot. We do not have time for you're the one who started this conversation. I guess we did that earlier on. We did this a little bit earlier, you're the one who started this conversation. Oh, okay, good. Cool. All right, done. No, I want to do it. We'll do it really quick. Oh Lightning God. round, you're the one who started this conversation. This is from Sean. GT time question. With the Game of the Year awards uh, over and most anticipated lists starting to pop up, what are your thoughts on what Game of the Year 2015 might look like? I don't mean a specific game, but more on where the industry is moving. Just a year ago, who would have expected a collectible card game, Hearthstone, to have topped anyone's Game of the Year lists? Do you think we will see a more standard Game of the Year, crowned winner, or is it something else going to get us to sit down and play in a way that we didn't see coming? So, su super quick answers. Uh, Ian's answer is that Bloodborne will win, a, a more traditional Game of the Year type of game. Uh, Bloodworth, if, if you're just listening, is standing up in a way that shows off his obnoxious shirt. So you just think Witcher 3 is going to be Game of the Year, no question. Probably. Brandon, do you think it'll be a traditional game or another weirdo game that, that knocks us off our feet? Uh, I think it'll probably be a traditional game. Um, I just feel a lot of stuff got pushed. A lot of these, uh, the games that we would have been contenders, it just felt like an eight point two kind of a year. We got like all those games. We got like a couple like really, really special, fun, exclusive games. <laughs> but uh, I think a lot of the stuff that people really, really didn't want to mess up in the light of like a lot of these games being released in buggy, they were just like, okay, we, we cannot mess these amazing games up because we know they're good. Yeah. So we really got pushed that year. And I think we're getting all of those games. So I think it's going to be a very hard hitting. We did, we did, you know, there was just games that we passed doing our top 10 anticipated that was like, wow, that franchise <laughs> is yeah. not on our top 10 anticipated list. Wow. So... Um, yeah, I think it'll be uh, I'm, I, my my dark horse here, and this is me completely standing outside of it because, like, personally, it's Arkham Knight or uh, Just Cause Three. But uh, I could see Metal Gear being a sleeper hit. Yeah. I could see Metal Gear just whoa, you know, like making us cry, making us think. Because the last thing Kojima did, PT, blue, you know, whoa, you know, the yeah. guy, like, I don't know, I could just see the guy being like, all my, I, I, that guy blew my mind when he when GTA when that trailer came out and he was like, well. We're done. You know, he was like, they beat us. That Look at that game. That looks amazing. You know, like, I could see him really, really, really pulling out all stops for this one. He so, cares. He absolutely cares. But, uh, I'm, not, I'm not putting my chips on that. That's just my, my gut. At least, what do you think Game of the Year 2015 looks like? Uh, it's like a blonde, <laughs> elven-looking, like, boy. And he's got a green hat and, like, a sword <laughs> and a shield <laughs> on his back. And he's got a horse that he rides through, like, grassy fields. That's, That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there. yeah, it's still a little new, it's a little edgy, a little unorthodox, but... Sounds too family friendly. It sounds like definitely this panel believes that it, a regular game, for, forgive me for saying regular game, a more traditional game of the year game is going to win game of the year 2015. 2014 was just a weird year. Yeah. And I feel like, honestly, I feel like a lot of press outlets kind of went, like, with the most, like... Going with Shadow of Mordor is just like, we need a regular game to win Game of the Year. <laughs> Why not this one? Like, well, Shadow of Mordor isn't a Game of the Year kind of game, you know? It just felt like like every, no matter what game you had to pick, everybody had to be like, okay, I know this game has issues, but here's where we're going. Yeah. Like, here's why our particular outlet leaned towards this game. Mm -hmm. Just forget all the stuff that's like wrong with it. And then I think there's like a lot of games that came out last year, like you could you could totally justify it. It's like Dragon Age, of course Dragon Age, you know, like uh, Shadow of Mordor, like yeah, that doesn't like, it wouldn't be my pick, but like I could write that, you know. If yeah. I was working for an outlet, somebody was like, write this game of the year. I'd be like, in seconds, I could totally do it. Where I think I think we're gonna get a games this year where it's like, oh, you picked that, okay, cool. I don't, you know, yeah. I'll hear your explanation, but like I know what it's gonna be because everybody's just the the praise is just echoing across everywhere. Whereas like again, this year was just kind of Hearthstone would not have a chance in 2015. No, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. 
It may be a more traditional game, but I think it will be one that we didn't expect to be as good as it is. What? Like the game that will win game of the year. Oh, it's going to be like a little surprising. It's going to be like Batman. Batman's going to yeah. make us cry. It will yeah. be a game that we thought, we, we predicted, yeah, this will be a good game, but we yeah. didn't realize how good. Yeah, I like that idea. That'll be it. Cool. I'm just going to come in the next day after getting the, the code. Just to... <laughs> oh my god, Brandon's crying about Batman right now. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's crying about Batman again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a regular day. <laughs> Uh, so that was your line to start of this conversation. If you have any ideas for what we should talk about on the show, uh, please write something in the comments below. Uh, let's do a closing bet. Here we go. Next week, we're going to see the release of Dying Light. Feels like that's been announced for ages. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm going to look at the eight most recent reviews on GameRankings.com. I'm going to search for the word parkour. How many times will I see the word parkour? in the eight most recent reviews of Dying Light. Brandon, you may choose whether you want to go first or last. Um, in eight reviews, so just in living those paragraphs. <coughs> I'll go first. Okay. Um, out of eight. Out of eight reviews. Eight most recent. Uh, four. Okay. Because you can also say free running. Yeah. Uh, I just I made that decision the other day. I was writing about it, and I was like, "Oh, par no, I'm free running because parkour." Yeah, good decision. We'll talk about it after the bets are locked in. Uh, I'll go six. Elise, who's reviewing it for us? Are we included in this eight? Only for the eight most recent, and I'm betting we won't be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say seven. Okay. Blood. Uh, I'll go low on this one. I'll go three. Okay. Let me lock those in. <coughs> I just feel like it's one of those dumb, overused words. Just like you're gonna be parkouring over things. It's like, well, come on. I remember one. That was one of those like very way too late in life. I was in a conversation and so. Oh, there was a script I got from Shane. I'm like, what's parkour? Yeah. He was like, really? Have like, you not no, seen I James really Bond? No Did you not see that James Bond movie? It's yeah. all in this is a rage. Like, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It was like after that French action movie. Those guys. Yeah. One of them was recently into like was one of Paul Walker's last movies. Was what he did. Uh, the guy from like the Brick Mansion. Oh no, we broke the law. Brick Mansion. Look, oh, no, the yeah, that was like the new one, but yeah. Um, don't know. Yeah, didn't know. District. You haven't heard of parkour? Yeah. Dude, you gotta see Christina Royale. Like the whole opening sequence. Is like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like James Bond is different, dude. Okay, so uh, let's talk about last week's bet. We bet on how long the end credits of Resident Evil Remake HD would be. Way off. Actually, very short credits. Yeah. Mm. The credits are two minutes and six seconds long. The winning bet was Brad Ellis with three minutes, which means that at least you are the winner. Is that, there you go, Brad. Is that two points for guest seat? Is that where we're at right now? Uh, uh, shoot. You're the we'll one that's. Yeah, wow, you're week. asking us. Why don't what? I keep track? What is wrong with me? <laughs> anyway. Uh, Am I a good host? No, like, no, obviously. Someone's not. supposed to respond to that. Uh, so, uh, one point for guest seat for this week. Uh, Elise, that means that you get to promote any video you want to and also uh, sign us off. Yay. So, every week we play a tabletop game in table GT's Tabletop Adventures. Usually it's D&D, sometimes it's Fiasco. This week we're playing D&D. Not sure when the video is going up though because it's a little bit late. So you can look for it this weekend or you can go back and look at our back catalog of D&D and catch up. And uh, to sign off, don't bird dog your friends. Don't bird dog people. That's, that's it from GT time. <laughs> don't be a bird dog. I love... Yes, <laughs> <laughs>